altcoins won't make it. It is a drastic statement, but hear me out. I'm going to take you through the show and explain to you exactly what I mean by the statement. Uh, it is not clickbait. There is an actual possibility that some of these altcoins will slowly but surely trend to zero. And I'm also going to cover what's going on with Binance as well as what's happening with the stock market. It is coming into a very, very key level at the moment. Uh, so let's get straight into the show. You can see on the banter bubbles chart over here, at least on the weekly time frame, most of the coins continue to be red. On the hourly, we are seeing a small bounce, which is currently taking place. Um, and that is off of yesterday's uh, uh, data which came out. So if you go to your Forex calendar over here, you can see on Tuesday, if you look at the CPI coinflation data, it did come out a lot better than expected. Uh, there we have it on the month on month. It came down at 0.4% less than what was initially expected. And today we're going to have the FOMC economic projections, a statement, and the Fed funds rate update. And then we should also get a dot plot update, which is going to give us a lot of guidance going forward uh, with regards to what they might do with the interest rate hike. So Currently, it's priced in that there won't be an interest rate hike today. Therefore, if there is one, of course, expect that the market's going to take that really badly. And that would mean that prices are going to go down. So that's that out of the way. Next, I wanted to outline over here by JW. He says over here that Binance and CZ have been selling spot Bitcoin at an alarming rate to defend the BNB $220 liquidation waterfall. As spot Bitcoin has sold off, BNB is being purchased, which defends that $220 liquidation, but it also caps the upside potential for Bitcoin. It's a total house of cards. So basically suggesting that because Binance holds such a big market share uh, of Bitcoin and the Bitcoin that's on exchanges, I'm going to show you a chart as well uh, just now to show you what market share exchanges actually hold of Bitcoin. It's a huge, huge amount. Um, he's basically saying they're selling that to try and keep the BNB price up. And basically, if you follow on to that, then SKU says over here, SKU 52, it is SKU 52 and that rhymes, can confirm that this is true. Looks like Bitcoin is being sold off for USDT reserves. USDT reserves are being pumped into BNB aggressively since the 27th of May. BNB is being sold off for BSD to suppress that volatility of Bitcoin. And then BSD is being pumped into Bitcoin to suppress the downside volatility so that Bitcoin can be swapped out for USDT. This is technically market manipulation. Binance is definitely up to something here to prevent BNB from crashing as well as BTC. Um, and you can see it over there. If you look over here, uh, here you have the cumulative volume delta on the spot uh, for coming to the downside. And then you have BUSD going towards the upside. And then if you look over here on the right hand side, uh, Binance spot is being pushed up over there. And then the cumulative volume delta is coming towards the downside. So CZ commented on that though, actually. And uh, he said, where is that comment? He, I'm sure he hasn't deleted it. He said four, here we go. Four, Binance have not sold off any BTC or BNB. We even still have a bag of FTT. And then he said, when proof, because uh, this is kind of blatant, because you can see it on chain, right? You can see what's going on. So interesting unfolding. We'll see. Let's watch this over here and see what unfolds. Maybe he is up to something. I'm not sure. Um, at the end of the day, we are charters. We just look at our price levels and then we identify from there uh, where the risk is towards the up or the downside. And I think we've played the market pretty well. We played the bounce nicely right into the top of that wick, obviously rejected, and now prices come down. And if you remember what I said yesterday, I would be looking still for a sweep of those range lows, and I'll identify all the levels for you and what you'd need to see for things to change. So with regards to Binance and the SEC, uh, Binance US, uh, the SEC have now agreed to work out a deal to avoid full asset freezes. That's according to Bloomberg. So that came out as of yesterday, later yesterday. Uh, basically, they're saying that they will try work around this and try not to freeze Binance US. So pretty interesting. Now, also worth looking at is the stock market. You can see the fear and greed index on the stock market has now reached that 80 level. We officially in extreme greed. So Many, many bears have been uh, caught completely offside, having shorted the stock market all the way pretty much since the lows, looking for major, major breakdowns. And they weren't able to identify that the stock market was also going through a transitionary phase, uh, phase at least going into a ranging market and now looking like it may start to trend. 
So if you look over here at Urian, what he has to say about the stock market, he says, if we are in fact in the infant stages of a new bull market, that is again for the stock market, the brightening outlook for earnings is one reason why that may be the case. So they'll always come and try and now justify. I'm not saying that he was wrong, just saying that often they come justify why this is taking place. So he says the market always looks ahead, not always correctly. <clears throat> and if the earnings cycle is starting to improve in 2024, then it makes sense that stocks are finding their footing right now. In the chart, we can see that the valuation price of the total return equation uh, tends to do the opposite of what the earnings side does with valuations crossing over from negative to positive. You can see that over here on the histogram uh, around two to three quarters ahead of that earnings cycle turn. That is what makes the market timing around cyclical inflection points such a low probability endeavor. So basically you're saying because the market's forward looking, right? The market is forward looking. They see inflation coming down. They project that earnings are going to be picking up into 2024. And remember, the market is always three to six months forward looking at trying to anticipate what may happen next. So suggesting that is the reason for the big move up. Now, if you look over here from finance a lot, finance a lot. It says if people are calling for a larger blow of top on the stock market, if they correct, then that means that both the MACD and the PPO indicators on skew would have to go off of the chart. That's how extreme this rally has become according to at least the momentum oscillator. So we're going to bring up the chart as well and we'll take a look at that. He has the move. Basically, this is the entire move. Of course, from bottom to top, it's been quite substantial. Um, I think that Ran actually looked at this yesterday and it's pretty much... Um, close to what Bitcoin's done, right? That's 26% from bottom to top currently on the S&P 500 futures. But I've outlined the gray box area. You should expect that there is going to be at least some sort of a pullback from that zone because you are going to be coming into resistance. And currently from re this price action that we have right now into that box, you're looking at only another two to maybe 4% move before you start to hit that resistance. And keep in mind when you zoom in, you can see we have already moved from the last touch of the trend line, which has been uh, gauging the overall direction. Remember, that's what trend lines do. Trend lines are not necessarily meant to be perfect. They just gauge the overall direction of the trend. We've overextended 7.6% already from that level. And it's been up only for around 14 days with a couple of pauses in between since that trend line was touched. Now, if you understand timing counts, you'll know as well that uh, there's magic with the number seven and 14. Usually it works in, in uh, intervals of seven. And therefore, we're coming into the 14th day. So you could be looking soon at a potential pullback. But the pullback doesn't necessarily mean a major crash. At first, I would be looking for a reversion back into the top of the range high or the liquidity zone, maybe back uh, uh, reverting towards the longer term trend line over here. And then we can gauge if that's going to bounce from that zone. Now, if you do want to trade that, by the way, you can on Prime XPT, uh, you get up to a $7,000 signup bonus. By the way, I will be giving away, actually, I'll give away more than what that bonus is. I have a couple of promo codes. Um, I think usually it works as a percentage. Let me just look over here. If you sign up, I think it, it's 7% which means that you get up to $7,000. If you deposit $100,000, you would get $7,000 is where it's capped. I have promo codes that will give you up to 20%. What you would need to do is DM me on Twitter. I, I almost regret saying that because I know my inbox is already going to be flooded. But if you do have an account and you've signed up with me, send through your user ID on my Twitter and I'll send you one of those 20% codes. Okay, moving on. You can see also the Nikkei, uh, Japan's Nikkei is uh, 225, it rises to 33 year highs, uh, reaching the highest level since 1990. So it really seems like it's a bull market out there within equities and crypto is failing to catch a bit. But there is one scary chart which I brought up yesterday and then yesterday after the show, I went and I outlined exactly what happened at these uh, inflection points. So when you look at this, Pretty interesting. If you look over here, this is the S&P 500 uh, correlated to the M2 money supply, right? Every time that it pushed up into this trend line over here, that was the first one. That led to the major dot-com crash. 
Then when you pushed into the horizontal box, which was also a key level, you had the 2008 great financial crisis, which led to a major breakdown. Then you had the COVID black swan event when you hit this uh, vertical line over here. And then that one over there, which matched up with this longer term trend line and the horizontal was the 2021 highs. And then I just labeled this one as unknown. So I think that what I'm basically trying to say is if you do see price come into this horizontal area, it's probably additional uh, reason to not go long into resistance just in case this chart does uh, bring something else out major like you saw in the previous uh, times that you hit those major resistance points. So let's keep an eye on that chart. Um, not too many data points, right? So don't quote me on it. I just find it interesting to look at. We have one, two, three, four data points. Maybe the fifth time will give us something. I don't know yet. Let's wait and see. Uh, moving on to the dollar index, it looks like the breakdown is so far being fully confirmed with additional closes under the T1 level that we had. That was our initial first target when we went long off the bottom. And now that you're closing under there, more than likely you're going to have continuation towards the downside. It looks like bears are starting to win when it comes to the DXY. Remember, generally speaking, a dollar that's declining results in a stock market that's inclining. And if the DXY is going up, then your risk on assets tend to suffer. But the correlation still is out of whack for Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin all the way trending down, completely uh, diverging away from what the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 are doing while they continue towards the upside. But at some point, there probably will be a mean reversion. And hopefully that means that Bitcoin will start to move towards the upside. Um, at least that's for the, the guys that are out there hodling. And if you look at, at this chart over here, this is also from Don Crypto. He says Bitcoin versus the US dollar liquidity over the past years. There's a clear correlation. Also clear how we're deviating at this point due to the recent FUD wave which has happened, which that's the deviation. I've also just shown you that. And he says at some point he'd expect that this gap will close at least partially, uh, but we'd need to get rid of all the drama before that happens. So totally agree. The only question is what happens with the altcoins once that takes place. So that's part of what today shows, but I'm going to show you uh, some of those altcoin charts in a moment's time. He has Bitcoin on a weekly chart. We're still waiting to fill the uh, order block level, which is over here between 22,300 and 24,500. I still think there's quite a high possibility that price will push back into that level. And then we need to see, very important, the reaction off of that level. If there's a sharp reaction towards the upside and a close that looks like this candle, that would look incredibly bullish. Last week's candle at some point during the week was looking like that, where it wicked down into these levels, started to get demand and push back up. Maybe this week is the week, maybe sometime later on today, uh, depending on what the FOMC says, might give that final push into this area. And then maybe price comes back up, volatile day, closes above, and then bulls are on their way up. Okay. What I want to outline though, nothing changes until such point as you close above $28,000 on Bitcoin. That's when you break the weekly structure towards the upside uh, because it's just been lower lows and lower highs, right? Continuously trending towards the downside. And what I wanted to bring up about that, there's really no trade over here. It's it, I can't really be on a, on a swing trade perspective, shorting the market, and I also can't be longing the market yet. So I've put this massive... Um, line in over here, this massive arrow towards the up and the downside. And basically the point of this is I need to see something like this. Either you need to come up, take out these levels. So if you look over here, where I just told you at that 28,000 level, you either need to break and close above that to break structure towards the upside, or I need to see a sweep into this demand zone and then for price to come back and close above the trend line over there at 23,900. One of those two things need to happen before I activate a trade as a swing trader. Otherwise, it's kind of in the no man's land continuing to trend down and it's really difficult price action for a swing trading perspective. Low time frame, there's always trades and we have been taking those. So as mentioned, with regards to what I said with the um, Binance, if they are pushing up the price uh, of, of um, at least BNB by selling BTC, this is an illustration of the Bitcoin supply visualized across different platforms, right? So if you look at how much Bitcoin exchanges hold, these little graphics illustrate this is the Bitcoin that's currently on exchanges. You know the saying, if they're not your keys, they're not your coins. So if you do hold a lot of Bitcoin and you have your huddle positions that are out there, consider putting that onto a hardware wallet or at least consider diversifying that across multiple different exchanges rather than keeping everything on one exchange. 
I met somebody the other day and they told me that uh, they got into Bitcoin in 2016. And uh, this was a couple of days ago that I met this guy. Um, and he's had all of his crypto on Binance since 2016. And I told him, do you know what's currently going on? Obviously with Binance, it might freeze assets, et cetera, et cetera. He had absolutely no clue and he has 100% of his crypto there. I don't know how much he has, but since 2016, he's been accumulating. I'd imagine it's quite a lot. So be careful out there. Don't keep too much on exchanges. These are the zombie coins. So uh, these are basically coins that have never moved. That's your, your dispersion. If you want to look at the ratios against each other, these are Satoshi's coins. So also never move the orange ones. Grayscale, that's how much they hold. Look at how much more the exchanges have. Pretty much twice as much as Grayscale. Um, this is the amount that's being mined per year, the amount used on Ethereum. So all interesting, right? BTC sees from token plus scam. Uh, that's actually what led to a major pump in 2019, an artificial pump within the market. Uh, Mount Gox wallets uh, coins are over here. So not that much, right? Mount Gox is not as much when you look at it. The amount bought by MicroStrategy, Mount Gox and MicroStrategy have pretty much exactly the same. Look at that. 138,000 Bitcoin still in Mt. Gox wallets. 139,000 have been bought by MicroStrategy. Okay, then you got the amount seized by the US authorities. 94,000 uh, bought by Tim Draper. He still has a lot, 30,000. And then you start to move down. Tesla, they still have 10,800. Then the 10,000 paid for a pizza. Can you believe that? Imagine you were that guy. Um, okay, and that's it, guys. So that is what I'm looking at over there. Now, what does that mean for Total and the altcoins? Well, Total is still trying to hold at least above the mid-range over there. That's a pivotal area, uh, 958 billion. Total 2, let's take a look at Total 2 quickly. All right, there's Total 2. So Total 2 has broken down below both the mid-range and the diagonal. So it's a high confidence. If you were trading this on a five-minute chart and this was just the, the a, a random altcoin that you're trading, what would you do if you saw something like this happen, right? The break of that, if there was any push-up into this level, you would have to short, right? That means you're shorting, targeting back down towards the range low at 426 billion. And then more importantly is total three because that's where all the altcoins lie, right? We are currently still hanging around at the range low, 301 billion, but more than likely you're probably gonna break that and come all the way down to 233 billion, which won't be good for altcoins. So if you look at total three, here is a uh, chart with a parallel marking all the major bottoms over the past years. Total three, remember that excludes Bitcoin and Ethereum. It's all the other altcoins after that. And you're looking at potentially move all the way back down to the bottom. If that happened over here, you're looking at 63% down from the top to the bottom, uh, which means that potentially you could still have a long way down. And Basically, what I wanted to bring up also is the dominance. The dominance continues to show signs of strength. It is creating another small, honest low time frame, a bull flag over here, which likely has a breakout all the way to 54% based off of the pole. The pole was measured from here to here, from bottom to top. So you take this level all the way up to there, and then you copy paste that, and that gives you your breakout level to 54%. So it's all in alignment, right? Suggestive that you're gonna have further downside. The uh, ETH BTC chart continues to hang around this resistance line, which was currently uh, holding it as minor support, but more importantly, broke below the mid range. And therefore we're targeting that 25% of the range level, which comes in at 0 0.6, sorry, again, 0 0.06243. So what does that mean for alts? Well, Ultimately, if you look at the altcoins, and this is really what the show is about, and you measure these altcoins against their Bitcoin pairing, although it looks sideways, it's sideways and down. And this is the whole trick, right? It is a slow bleed for the altcoins into Bitcoin. So your value, yes, the USD value can still go up. And that's what's so scary about it. That's what creates the perception that you're making so much money. But ultimately, over time, this has taken just over the course of this year, it's pretty much just trended down, right? So from there, you can look all the way. It just continues to go down. Yes, some of them are outliers and they have massive moves up. But when you start to look at something like this, um, if you look at the cryptocurrency uh, prices by market cap and you switch this over here, from USD to Bitcoin and you change that at the top and everything's measured in Bitcoin value, you can click on any of these charts and you'll see they continue to just trend down against Bitcoin. I don't know, since XRP is a hot topic, let's look at XRP over here. 
click on any of those, put it onto max and you'll see, yes, although there's been times where it spiked up, it's mostly just trending towards the downside and it's like picking a needle in a haystack, right? It's very, very difficult uh, to choose the right altcoin. The, the worst part about it is most of the time that the people get into these altcoins, uh, let's say XRP, uh, they get in somewhere around here when it's at its most hype level. And currently against Bitcoin, it's down 91.22% since its all-time high. So I just want you to keep that in the back of your mind when you are trading these alts because it could get a lot worse if you're an altcoin hodler. Even if you are dollar cost averaging into altcoins, um, I have a chart here to show you that. Look at that. If you dollar cost averaging into altcoins, these are some of what was considered the top coins in the past. And had you dollar cost average into them, these were the results, right? So let's say, for example, um, right now for this year, the only one that's uh, really in profit is Bitcoin by only 5.1%, assuming you were dca over the course of this year. XRP, 19.2, so that's an outlier, 9%. And then the rest of them, look at that, red, right? significantly red. Tomo, which is an AI coin, 99% up if you DCA over the course of this year. But you can, un you need to understand over time, these are all going to bleed out like the rest of them. Look at the rest of these altcoins, all down, right? Let's say you started uh, in 2022 or 2000, let's even go to 2020. Now, Bitcoin, you'd be up 35.5%, ETH, 165%, BNB, 338%, right? So those are, of course, more. But let's say you worked out the average. Look at the majority of them. The majority of them are still going to be red against Bitcoin. There's only a couple of them that are green, and it's wishful thinking to say that you're going to have picked the right coin. So you need to be careful. Next, let's look over, over here at is it uh, Bitcoin or altcoin season? Currently at the moment, yes, of course it is Bitcoin season. So you want to continue to play that trend until such time as it changes. And if you look in the past over here, we usually get down to much, much lower levels. We got down into the um, low 13 region, but when the bear markets typically end, you usually have one more sweep down further and you can go possibly down as low as that 1% mark. Now, let's have a look over here at, uh, if, if you look at the top 10 without the stable coins, where does the dominance lie? Well, technically Bitcoin dominance is sitting at 61.3%. So again, my point is, it's fine to dabble in altcoins, to play in altcoins uh, from a trading perspective. But if you're an investor, you definitely want to put most of your energy into Bitcoin uh, if you're playing this game for the next 10 years, right? Over 10 years, don't hold a, a bag of five different altcoins over 10 years versus Bitcoin or even over five years because the chances are very, very high that you're going to lose. You need to understand the way the market cycle works, right? There is a time when we trade altcoins and where we go aggressively in. There's times where I'm all in Bitcoin and then there's times where I've had zero Bitcoin and I'm fully, fully loaded into altcoins. Today is not one of those times that I'm loaded into altcoins. I'm still, I still think that there is a bit more pain ahead and I just wanted to mention that to you guys. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you want me to bring up any of those charts or you can do it yourself. Go on to CoinGecko. Very, very simply put, uh, just change over here again from usdc type in their btc change it to bitcoin click on that it will come through to this page pick the coin that you like let's say solana people love solana let's click on solana and have a look at that and then it will show it to you in the satoshi value right look at that massive slow bleed towards the downside uh, pretty much since the all-time high straight down wait for this uh, trend to change for example had you been in Solana over Bitcoin in January of 2021, of course, then you would have done very well, right? There was a big, big move up uh, for the entire altcoin season. The altcoin seasons are short-lived. They only last for a couple of months to maybe a year at the most. And that's where you make all your money. You take it, uh, put, it uh, put it in your pocket and walk away and uh, save some of that in Bitcoin. All right, guys. Also, do me a massive favor. Push the like button over there. Smash the like button. It does help to get the show content out there. And then we're going to have a look here at some of the lower time frames as well. So uh, Bitcoin on the daily, still same thing, continuing to trend down towards that 200-day moving average, currently coming in at 23,600. Really, for me, there's no trade at the moment. We are stuck below the pivot level on the daily time frame. Uh, continue to do so. Every time we push into the short-term moving averages, the yellow and the pink, we reject off that level and we continue to come down. The longer we hold under here, the more likely it is we're going to break the 200 EMA. And then ultimately, the rock-solid support for me personally is 23,900. 
Again, I want to emphasize if this happens today or tomorrow before I do a show, maybe in the late hours of the evening, um, bear, bear in mind, I will be bidding this level. I 100% will be bidding this level because that is really the final, final line in the sand for me, um, at least from a bullish perspective. Once you start to break and hold underneath that level, uh, things become quite bad very quickly. All right, what about Ethereum? Ethereum's pivot level is currently sitting at, uh, there you have it, 1774, so 1,774, continues to hold under that. Remember, what does this look like? You always have to ask yourself as well, what does the pattern look like? If you look at this, big strong candle to the downside. If you continue to consolidate over here, um, you can let me know in the comments what you think that is. You should be able to identify that would be a bear flag, right? That's a bear flag, which would lead to an equal move according to the poll uh, down. And that looks like it would bring you perfectly into that 200 MA. Um, that is at least for Ethereum. Okay, Bitcoin on the, what time frame? I think I have the four hour time frame over here. Yesterday, I told you, watch for the stochastic RSI mean reversion into that level. You have a regression and it's gonna bounce off of that zone more than likely. That's exactly what happened. Price pushed up into the 50 EMA, which is the red level over here. Uh, the red moving or the red exponential moving average rejected off of that. And these uh, little lines that I drew a couple of days back are still holding true. So I'll be watching to see if it has followed through towards the downside today. Again, that's your high confluence level lining up with the 200 moving average. Okay, what about high block capital? What do they have to say? Well, currently, actually, most of your liquidity on the seven day time frame is stacked at 26,900. So if price does move up to that level and grab that liquidity, don't get overly excited as a bull. Consider that an opportunity to take some profits if you're stuck in positions, because more than likely it's going to grab that liquidity and then still move in the other direction. All right, what about if you look over here at the uh, delta levels? Well, you can see a lot of people de-risking within the market. This is one of the most flat delta levels that we've seen in a long time, obviously in anticipation of the FOMC. And that's actually the smart thing to do, right? As a trader, uh, it's probably best to sit out, right? I see Richie Morton says, is this really live? I don't see uh, Kyle, where did that go? I don't see Kyle answering any of the community questions. No, I'll answer the questions. We'll save the questions for the end. Let's quickly finish this last bit and then I'll be glad to answer any of those questions. So, okay, this is basically flat and there's not much that we can deduce from this. Um, basically, leverage traders are de-risking over here. Okay, this was the trade that I gave uh, yesterday. Now, it missed it by like, literally $3, the final TP was over there, but there it is nevertheless, big push up as soon as we hit that level, rejection off there, how did I get this level? I used the Lux Algo indicators over here, they change based on the what happens with the price action. At the time we had a strong order block on the left hand side at 26,300, uh, this was also the mid range of the overall range, I put that in myself, and basically that was the level for me, high confluence level, watch for price to push into there, reject, come back down, and then I'd exit the position. Now you have the liquidity building up on the underside in the same way that we had the liquidity towards the upside, which is why I expected the push up. So I still expect a big push down, sweep all of these lows, and then we can reevaluate, see if price regains and recaptures that level. If you are interested in the Lux Algo indicators, I just wanna let you know there is a lot of them that are free over here. If you just go to Lux Algo, there you go. I have obviously the paid version, but there is a lot of different free ones. I mean, they have thousands of these things. So feel free to play around with those. If you want the premium ones, though the premium overlays, it gives you the best of everything with adaptability to, to switch things out. There is a sign up bonus, which is in the description over here. There you go, you get up to 30% off. Click on that link first, then type in the code KD30, which is written over here. There you go, KD30, write that in, um, and then it'll basically give you the sign-up bonus. Okay, now we can go to the questions, if there is any questions. Bird flu, sounds like you have bird flu. Soul is not dead, not yet. Okay, I'm just kidding. Soul will probably, I think long-term soul is probably from a fundamental perspective, one of the best ones that are out there, but you really need to wait for the pain to be over, right? Uh, because it can go on a much, much longer than you think. You must remember the bear market is designed to uh, basically wear you down over time. And I've experienced this myself, where even the other day I went against my trading system and I took a long trade, uh, kind of maybe a little bit 
I don't want to say out of boredom, but out of frustration, waiting for a move, looking for an entry. And I took a small long trade when I probably shouldn't have. And that's what the bear market does to you. And I realized that, that I was making a mistake. I wrote it in my journal and I basically closed the trade out. I closed in profit, thankfully. But nevertheless, this is what the bear market does to you. So um, you, markets in general are designed to take the most amount of money away from most of the people most of the time. Always remember that saying, it takes most of the money away from most of the people most of the time. And you really have to think differently to what the masses are, especially when you're at the extremes, if you want to succeed in this game. Okay, let me know in the comments if you are present. I see Frank says late but present. Thank you for joining, Frank. I see we got uh, Drishan, we got Paka, we got the Angry Pistons, we got Dua, the Middle Journey, JP. We have Mackie Bob, uh, Candida Prout, Bird Flu, I see you there as well. Knights, Red, Barbarin. Are you guys a bunch of gamers? You guys sit and game on the weekends. It's all gaming names. Murad. Okay, is it time to buy Cardano? I don't think so. Go go to the part where I showed you here and you can compare how it is doing in relation to Bitcoin. So change this over here again, a reminder, change this from USD to BTC and then go look at Cardano. Let's see where's Cardano. And this depends, right? The answer depends on your time horizon as well. How long are you wanting to hold for? But that is an incredibly strong downtrend and that's against Bitcoin. So the time to buy Cardano was pretty much over here in December of 2020, everything, all altcoins outperformed. Uh, it's when it's a risk on environment, right? Big money printing within this phase over here. All of these altcoins will absolutely smash Bitcoin in a risk on environment. But when it comes to a risk off environment, which is more or less what we're in now, um, then you expect that it's obviously going to downtrend against Bitcoin. All right, guys, I think that brings us to the end. I have pretty much covered just about everything. I appreciate each and every single one of you. Thank you all so much for watching. And let's see what happens with the FOMC meeting today. Um, I think that after today, we're going to have a lot more guidance with regards to the market. Um, either we're going to continue down and the stock market's going to pull back or the stock market will continue up. And then I think Bitcoin will likely catch up to the stock market um, and we, we should bounce off of these levels very soon. So I'll see you all on tomorrow's video. Have a great day. That's it from me and cheers for now.